Hello everyone. Uh, it's a two o'clock and I think that we can start uh, with uh, InfoShare today. First of all, uh, welcome everyone to uh, this giant InfoShare. InfoShare is, as you know, about uh, EduMeet. Uh, before the start, just a few announcements, please. Uh, this InfoShare will be recorded, so this is information that you know. Uh, please, when you are not speaking, turn off your microphones. It will be easier for all of us uh, that way. And uh, if you have questions or comments, you can uh, take it in the chat. And uh, also later in the second part of the info share, we will have discussion part. You can also raise a hand if you want to uh, ask something or discuss something. Uh, I'm Darko Paric. Uh, I will be moderator of the info share today. And uh, here, uh, uh, Edumit uh, will present uh, Bartolomeo Itikovsky with his team, and you will see presentation of the Edumit, also live demo of the Edumit, and uh, at the second part of the InfoShare, uh, we will have a discussion part where we can discuss all uh, spe uh, specifications or uh, so, some things about Edumit. Uh, on that part, you can talk and discuss with uh, Bartolomeo and his team. And uh, at the beginning of the InfoShare, uh, he's, here's is also Maria Risco. Maria is the World Package Leader of the Cloud uh, team in Jean, and she will say us a few introduction words about, uh, uh, about Edumit and about uh, our role uh, in the developing of uh, Edumit. So uh, thank you very much once again, and uh, Maria, you are welcome to take uh, the part in the video conference. Thanks, Darko. And hello, everybody, and then good afternoon to you all. I, I'd like to use the chance to say just a couple of words before we dive into uh, in this more detailed presentation about Edomit background. Uh, this, actually, this, this work has uh, been um, going on already for years, already uh, in earlier Zhang projects. But uh, the importance of these kind of uh, video conferencing tools um, has grown uh, immensely during the pandemics now uh, since last year. And um, in, in summer 2019, uh, after the uh, Jiang project um, annual internal re review, the cloud uh, team decided to have um, um, the software package instead of the central service. Um, and we started to develop it and entered the pilot phase in October uh, 2019. And then soon the pandemic started. <laughs> so um, the, the team has really uh, been very flexible and literally worked days and nights during these first months last year. Um, so it has been a, a really big effort uh, for us. And, and from um, November last year, the EduMeet uh, software became the production grade uh, software. So now it's the time to um, introduce it to a wider audience. Um, so I, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who has been um, engaged in this work because it wasn't only the team itself. Uh, it, it has been also many volunteers who have been developing this together. Um, not only in Europe, but also beyond. So, so there have been a, a big community um, uh, behind it. But uh, yeah, this is a big thanks first. And uh, I would like to give now the word to the uh, leader of the EduMe team, Bartolomei Tsikovsky. Uh, thank you very much, Maria, for this uh, very nice, uh, nice words at the introduction. Uh, Bartolomei, is, now it's uh, your turn. You can start with the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bartek Kijikowski. I am from PSNC, and I've got the big pleasure to, to be the part of the uh, Edomit team. Uh, we would like to share uh, some information about our uh, product that is delivered, as Maria already mentioned, uh, as a software package. So, okay, Edumit, the video conferencing system for our societies for research, edu, and art communities. Uh, this is uh, Shant InfoShare organized by uh, Shant uh, Partner Relations Team, and it's, as already mentioned, it's being recorded. 
what is Edumit? Edumit is an easy and affordable video conferencing service from NRNs and other organizations. It's a web RTC based solution. Uh, the web conferencing tool uh, that is being delivered as a software package. Uh, so it's for on-premise installations. Uh, this platform is part of Jant uh, online uh, services portfolio and uh, can be installed by NRNs by months uh, as uh, uh, software as a service for their institutions that they're uh, working with. The overview of the Edumit offering, uh, our service is an open source uh, web conferencing system. It's an uh, interactive uh, video conferencing platform that is web-based and uh, is uh, highly supporting distant uh, learning uh, processes, uh, LTI, and we've got also the official Moodle plugin that is listed on the official Moodle uh, web page. Uh, this uh, service is created by Jant community for uh, Jant community, so for research and edu community. So it's created by our community for our community. And this is an uh, important message from our point of view. Uh, it's private, it's self hosted, and it's secure, and therefore it's uh, trustworthy. Which, which is very important nowadays. And of course, some branding and custom usage policies are possible just to be in line with your own uh, layouts, uh, branding and, uh, and policies. Uh, so very important message here is that we are a part of the community and we do understand the needs of our communities and we can adapt to these needs uh, and we listen to uh, to society. So uh, we are able to adapt road, even roadmaps to be in line with your needs. What is the story behind uh, the air to meet, uh, the design assumptions? Uh, the main idea was to introduce a complete video conferencing solution as an alternative to commercial uh, solutions and some other uh, open source as well. Uh, so we wanted to develop a technical infrastructure and uh, components for it, uh, basing on WebRTC uh, solutions. We wanted to provide common uh, system for our society that would be open source. And we wanted to simplify real-time communications uh, just to make video conferencing as easy uh, as possible uh, by introducing a uh, solution that is uh, available via web browsers. What are the benefits and, and, and values added for, for users? Uh, first of all, it's uh, on open source software uh, with uh, secure communication, uh, with trust that can be uh, uh, with trust uh, on similar level to, to organizations that, that, that are working on that. It's trustworthy, it's, it's keeping the audio video traffic inside the Jant and NRNs network as long as it is possible, of course, except last miles. The cost of the system is, is uh, really low comparing to commercial solutions. Uh, it's easy to use because of web RTC standards uh, being used that are built in the web browsers. So there is no need for installations uh, of uh, external or custom applications on your computers uh, or plugins uh, in your browsers. Uh, the key features uh, of the Edumit uh, we would like to present uh, like a, a demo because it's the best way to show what is possible. That's why we would like to share the Edumit screen with you uh, and uh, Stefan Otto from uh, Unimet will explain us 
some details about uh, functional features of Edomi. You know, but um, can you stop your your screen sharing? Then I can try to start. Okay, uh, to get to a room in Edumeet, you have to go to just one instance. For example, uh, this is one of our demo instances we use quite often at Speed. And then you go to a starting page and can choose your room name. Uh, which I, for example, just pick one and type my name and choose my media I want to use in the meeting and join. And that's it. So I'm in there, but there's all, already some other guy and I can um, um, enable my camera. I can enable my audio device. I have audio indicator and I have audio indicator to all other participants as well. And if I want to switch my camera, I can um, go to settings and uh, pick another uh, uh, camera like this one, and then it's switched. If I want uh, more, uh, enable more videos from me, for example, to show a whiteboard or something, then I can just add a new video input and select a different camera connected to my computer. And then it will just uh, appear in the room as well. And I can just easy switch it off again. Um, if there are questions uh, according to functionality, just uh, write in chat and um, we will try to answer additional questions. And um, in principle, uh, if you want to invite others to the room, you just copy paste your internet address. And that's the, the main central concept in EduMeet that you make everything browser-based and easy so you pick your room, you uh, copy paste uh, just the URL to somebody else, and then they are in the room, in the room and that's it. Uh, you could say also this is quite unsecure today, but it's very easy, for example, to just lock the room and then uh, all um, participants or all, other persons try entering the room, you get uh, a message like now, for example, here I dropped a security shield with, a, with the indicator, there is somebody and I can see the name. Okay, there's one person in the waiting room or in the lobby, we call it. And I can just promote everybody in the room or just one person like this one. And then he's in. And yeah, hello, Marcy. And uh, so the room is still locked and I will get uh, permanently uh, notifications about new participants. Um, I get here also a direct shortcut to participant list why I get the list of everybody and uh, can mute, unmute persons or uh, see if there are a lot of them who is an active speaker right now. I get audio indicators in the uh, participant list and I see also raise hand symbols. For example, if some of you guys could raise your hand, I get an audio notification and I see, okay, they want to say something and I can, uh, no, I can't, I'm not yet moderator. So I can uh, actually log in and this is now connected to um, 
FIDE, which is uh, yeah, this edu gain in, in Norway. And I can log in. And now I'm switched to the moderator role. So I, I get additional button, buttons here and I can secure the room, mute everybody, stop video for everybody, stop all screen sharing or close the meeting for everybody or deactivate the raise hand for somebody. And I get also additional moderator actions here like kick out, stop somebody's audio for everybody or video. Or I can also assign uh, roles in the room for like, I want to have additional moderator in the room or presenters. And it's quite flexible in configuration. So you can also say um, in, uh, if you configure the whole uh, instance of the installation, then you can say um, who is, um, the, what rights these roles have, like that presenter could also do something like the moderator. So there are several uh, actions I can enable for those roles. Okay, participant list, that's it. And um, then, oh, there is somebody as well who wants in. We can see. Hello, Stefano. This is not Hello. 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 This is not clear. Not clear. Yeah. No, 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 I am in. I am yeah. okay. Oh, just a moment for the audio. I got a problem with my configuration. Mm. Uh, audio. Yeah, it's, it's uh, quite, quite usual. usual. Uh, yes, sorry. I see. Uh, I <coughs> I get I get audio you, from, you from you because, because you are in your conference, conference right, now. right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. So, uh, sorry, just a moment. Uh -huh. oh, oh, I, I stopped, I stopped video, video. Okay. In the, in the whole room, room. and, and I, can I can also. also just kick Just out. Kick. Sorry, <laughs> because this will get weird now. And if we get two video conferences for everybody here, and uh, so it's quite easy to get uh, audio echo uh, effects. So that's also because I'm or Bartek, for example, uh, has muted himself right now. So please uh, don't don't do this. Do this. <laughs> Um, um, so no, I get this. Yeah, I don't hear myself again. Okay, then we can continue. So right now we see, okay, we can actually lock the room effectively and protect us some from some other guys. And um, to audio settings, there are some special advanced audio settings, which are uh, like if you get more one, for example, professional interaction in the room, like singing together or playing music together, then it's um, very um, disturbing or unusual to have all these effects which you use for video conferencing, like echo cancellation. If you have a headset with a dedicated microphone to you, then you could uh, disable echo cancellation. Uh, for musicians and can also switch off a lot of uh, filters you don't want as a professional uh, musician and get uh, the most pure audio uh, possible. And there's also this voice activated unmute, this is a little special functionality that you can adjust uh, noise threshold. So you see your actual audio indicator here. And if the audio goes below this threshold, um, my uh, audio is automatically muted in the room. So this is something for example, virtual um, office, like permanent uh, meeting room 
uh, in, if you have a working group remotely distributed, you can have this room enabled and don't disturb others by background noise. But if you will say something, actually the microphone gets unmuted and uh, the audio is in the room. So uh, if you if I do this here right now, you get here a green microphone with a special indicator and I go below the threshold, like stopping my speaking. Then there is a special indicator in my microphone where I get the noise level and it's above, then it will activate my microphone again. So I will stop speaking. And uh, all this is, uh, I was muted and if I begin to speak, my microphone turns green again and it will send to the room again. So this is one special audio thing. You can also use this for like online gaming in the background only for audio conferencing and then it gets not so noisy than usual audio conferencing. But in usual uh, work they use, usually you use the default settings. Know uh, that you enable echo cancellation, auto gain and noise suppression. And you can upload your own uh, picture, uh, which is shown to everybody if you disable your video. But uh, you get also uh, the picture from, if you get from the federated login a picture, then it will also be used here as well. Okay. Um, other things we have screen sharing. So if one of you guys, Mercy, can you, for example, try to start your screen sharing? Mm -hmm. Try. Yeah, so I see here now, Marcy added a screen sharing and I can pop the screen sharing out as a different window. And then it's here available and I can also make it full screen and yes, for example, just a, a video player. And since we have, no, okay. And if I want to, Uh, can also maximize in the in the video window directly if I want to. Okay, so and screen sharing is activated by this button, and you get your uh, um, just uh, and that's like it looks like for you if you activate it as a presenter, and you can just switch it off like this. And there's a special option for screen sharing that you can as well select uh, the frame rate of the video. So it can like, okay, for a presentation, I want to save bandwidth. That's enough as one frame per second. But if I want to uh, share a video presentation, I can increase it to up to 30 frames per second. And I can choose also as well um, video quality. <coughs> And it's centrally configurable what kind of resolutions uh, is behind uh, these uh, settings here. Um, <clears throat> other stuff, I can, for example, change aspect ratio to 16 by 9. If I like this, for example, this edumeet is also often used for broadcasting situations. Then you want to force 16 by 9 video for broadcasting and make one video uh, full screen and then you get uh, uh, everything like this. Okay. Um, other stuff, I can hide myself. Uh, 
we have uh, a file sharing functionality. So if somebody shares the um, file in the room, I get a notification. So if one of you guys could share the file. So I got now a notification there in file sharing. I see, okay, there's a picture I want to download. And this file sharing actually is um, uh, powered by uh, file sharing technology. So if there are like 200 persons in the room and everybody tries to download uh, 100 megabyte video or something like this, it will not uh, slow down the server. It is uh, shared by everybody. So if somebody downloads uh, a little bit of a shared file, then this one will share to all the others as well. So it will scale with number of participants automatically. And it's called um, VetTorrent. We use this in the background there. Okay, are there some questions? So as I said, just ask in the chat or Raise your hand in the in the Zoom room, actually. There's a chat as well, so I can send chat messages, chat messages, and as moderator, I can clear the chat and clear also the file history. So if I use this for interviews in the row. I can clear everything live and invite the next one. Um, there we have a chat message from Marcel. Yes. Settings, I think that is mainly is basic functionality from from Edumit. The possibility of adding another camera that that that, that was mentioned, or I just skipped that. Uh, I showed in the beginning how to add a camera. So there is add a new video input, and this can be every camera device available on your on your system, and then it will just appear additionally in the room. So you get, for example, for whiteboard viewing. Okay, shall we then continue with presentation? Maybe it is also worth to mention about the translations of the, of the system to different languages. Zoom looks a little bit weird uh, for me. Did I share the screen at all? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Stefan. So we went through uh, the overview of features of Edumit. Uh, so just to uh, summarize uh, what, what we saw, uh, uh, the key features are of course web RTC audio and video communication, screen sharing, file sharing and chat features. 
we do have federated logging, including Edugain. Uh, speaker detection with uh, visual indicator, uh, audio and video stream management, full screen mode, rise hand options, connection testing, uh, customizable layout that democratic and field strip that uh, is also possible to, to define in your Edumit room. And uh, Edumit is supporting high resolutions. Uh, we tested it uh, up to 4K and it works fine. Uh, 8K is not tested fully yet, but we are working on that. If we want to compare Edumit to other uh, solutions, uh, both commercials and, and other open source solutions as well, uh, then uh, we can see that uh, there are some advantages of uh, uh, of Edumit. Uh, here we've got Edugain logging uh web based application uh, which is uh, available via uh, web browsers uh, we've got uh, about uh, in, in this solutions uh, in this uh, state uh, about 40 participants but it, it it's actually currently more uh, integration with LMS uh, ML, uh, LMS systems is, is possible in Edumit. It's free of charge for users. The video uh, and content resolution is tested up to 4K, but it's not uh, our final word. Uh, we are not able to claim the room yet, but it's coming soon. And we've got rice hand options, and you can see how it looks uh, uh, in comparison to to other uh, examples. Uh, we choose here life size zoom and Jitsi as an open source uh, solutions. However, these things are changing also in these uh, other services. So uh, this table needs to be uh, updated uh, sometimes. So the advantages of Edumit, it's uh, for research in the Edu community. Uh, uh, trust and security is, is important for us. Uh, traffic remains in our networks. We are using open standards uh, and we are open source uh, software that is uh, downloadable without uh, charge. Uh, we are planning to make uh, the uh, hybrid version that that is uh, going to communicate uh, with audio video streams between different uh, Edomit nodes. Integration into LMS is uh, is uh, something that is also very important for us. And later on, we are going also to look into some uh, more uh advanced uh, features like uh, augmented reality like uh, virtual reality uh, face recognitions gestures and this is these are long-term plans the delivery model of edumit uh, as uh, as maria already mentioned it's software package uh, and uh, documentation uh, there are uh, web pages that, that you can uh, from which you can download uh, the Edomit software under MIT license. It's it's on the GitHub. It's delivered as uh, package version uh, in depth uh, for for example Debian and Ubuntu and uh, as RPM as well. But there are uh, Docker versions available. Uh, so the dockerized version is there with uh, Ansible scripts for uh, multi installations uh, in one step. Uh, additionally, the Edomit demo instance is hosted by Chant uh, that uh, 
can be uh, used for testing academic service. The hardware requirements for Edomit uh, server are not high. Uh, this uh, example of, uh, of uh, configuration is able to, uh, to serve up to uh, 500 concurrent users in different rooms on, uh, on the uh, one Edomit server. And for more, uh, scaling information and recommend hardware, you can uh, visit uh, the GitHub page that is listed uh, on our slide. The roadmap of Adumi, these subversions uh, are released on quarterly basis. So every quarter, uh, the bug fixes and minor functional changes uh, will be released. And every six months, main, ver main versions containing new functional features uh, will be released. And these versions will be promoted via our website, via GitHub, uh, via our mailing list, will, and uh, other community channels that I will mention uh, later on. So what we already delivered, you, you saw, so we've got uh, a secure best version with uh, pre previous version as peer-to-peer -peer connections. We've got basic video conferencing functionalities and uh, Stuntern integration, which is important for video conferencing uh, services as about 30% attempts, uh, video conferencing uh, attempts may fail because of uh, some uh, network uh, problems like uh, firewall uh, issues, uh, filtering issues or uh, packet uh, filtering issues. And that's why we are going to introduce another service that is uh, serving stuntern functionalities and uh, that's working name is edutern. We've got federating login, we've got lobby and session management, we've got localization and translation into 25 languages as far as I remember. We've got the integrations in uh, LMS uh, with basic scalability and room management. What is, what is coming soon uh, on our roadmap is uh, mesh of servers. Uh, so the distributed architecture with possibility of uh, Edomit nodes to collaborate together in order to share audio video streams that will make uh, very big uh, rooms uh, possible. We are currently working on streaming and webinars functionalities as well. And uh, climbing rooms is also uh, on, uh, on our closest roadmap, as I mentioned before. Self-view uh, and uh, disabling, disabling self-view and mirroring self-view is something that is actually already there. Uh, and we are also uh, working on local recording features, uh, actually both local and, and remote. Uh, uh, recording features, which is, of course, important uh, functional aspect of uh, such as systems. In the big picture, until uh, end of 2020, we'll continue integration with legacy systems uh, and PSTN. So SIP uh, and PSTN, uh, we will be still working on uh, on audio mixing, uh, and we will enhance uh, that these engines that are already quite advanced and uh, Stefan shot in very detail. Uh, we will be working on further integrations with LMS. Uh, we want to introduce white whiteboard and, uh, and other functional aspects like background blur, for example. 
and desktop sh desktop sharing uh, with audio is something that is uh, already there actually we 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 moved that uh, to the sooner uh, part of uh, of the roadmap already a uh, hybrid version with uh, both uh, centralized and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mixed solution is also on our roadmap, uh, as well as investigated new research and technical areas, as I already mentioned, 8K, uh, stereoscopy, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, some gestures and uh, face recognition. These are ideas uh, for the future in a big picture of our roadmap. Currently, currently we chat, Patrick. Yeah, I want to answer it directly or after you. Actually, so, actually, Bartek, actually, we are collecting all the questions received in the chat and we will deliver you uh, so you can uh, answer on it uh, after your presentation if you want. Yeah, that, that would be perfect because I cannot see my chat windows now. No, it's good. Just to continue with the presentation. <laughs> you will receive questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, from November 2020, uh, we are in production. So, we passed the full uh, PLM process. Uh, and uh, what we know, uh, because there are um, absolutely no vectors in uh, in Edomit, so we are not able to to spy or chase the instances that are being uh, used all over the world but what we know uh, 14 nrns are using uh, Edomit. Uh, actually this software uh, has been this, uh, deployed by at least 14 nrns and uh, definitely more than 10 in different institutions. So we know about 80 uh, nodes uh, all over the world uh, that are uh, active. And as Maria uh, mentioned uh, before, the COVID-19 pandemic situation and the lockdown caused by this situation these have been the reasons uh, for much bigger interest and uptake uh, than we foreseen in the beta phase. Uh, and this was the very big reason to speed up things because we saw that uh, our society is uh, really in need and uh, just requires uh, such a software for everyday use. From the marketing point of view, we've got the EU trademark, it's work mark, uh, classes nine and, and 38. Uh, we've got web page dedicated for uh, Edomit service, it's edomit.org. Uh, you can find their descriptions and installations, hints and links to the, to the software packages. Uh, the demo service I mentioned before is uh, available at edomit.shunt.org. And we've got two mailing lists. Uh, uh, one is uh, community uh, at edomit.org. It's open list with open archive. So everyone can su subscribe, su subscribe there and uh, ask questions, collaborate, offer some support in some specific uh, uh scenarios uh, so this community is, uh, and there is also another mailing list uh, it's support at Adam, where uh, where uh, you can uh, ask uh, questions if there are some uh, more, if, if the community is, is not enough. There is also, of course, that communication channel uh, channels that are available on GitHub webpage. So like pull requests or issues that it's used very often also like a, important communication channel. Now we want to show you our uh, 
short demo movie magic. Can you please share? So I'm ready. So I try to share my screen. EduMeet in four simple steps. Step one, open your browser. Step two, go to edumeet.joam.org. Step three, type your nick and the name of your room or simply use edugain. Step four, start and enjoy your conversation. EduMeet is simple, no installation, no obligatory account, easy configuration. EduMeet is secure, no tracking tools, privacy and encryption, powered by our research community. EduMeet is social, works on PCs and mobile devices, perfect for ad hoc meetings, easy to share text, files and screen. EduMeet is synergic, multilingual open source based on Jeon and Rens network infrastructure, WebRTC communication. Simple, secure, social, synergic. EduMeet anytime. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Bartek, we received a lot of questions in chat, uh, and Eva uh, collected all the questions, and I think that she sent you directly. So now you can start, maybe start reading the question by question, and uh, give answer to uh, the question one by one. I think that is the best way. Yeah. So. Bartek, I can try to start and we will see so we can try to answer uh, most of it. Yeah. So okay. Okay. we can try chronologically. Um, so there were, um, let me get to the beginning. Screen recording, I see. Breakout rooms was the first question. Yeah, uh, so we are planning on breakout rooms and we want to do it a little bit differently than in Zoom. We talked to a lot of uh, teachers using Zoom in everyday use and they say mostly um they want it in other ways not that uh, statically like it is in zoom so but this will be a, a bigger effort there's there are some persons because it's open source uh, somebody hacked already a version about breakout rooms but this is like in in function like in zoom um if you wanted this better interaction uh, then we have to do it uh, properly with, with a more um, invest a, a little bit more work on this. So it's definitely on the agenda and uh, it, it will be there, but not like uh, in next month, perhaps in, in the summer. Uh, so breakout rooms is, is not, not yet there. 
uh, next question was about uh, recording. Uh, recording will be there quite soon. So there is actually two types of recording, like it is also in Zoom. You have locally uh, local recording and cloud recording or server-side recording. And both of them are in the pipeline and uh, there are already some development branches and we will release it in the, in the next uh, re release. So uh, recording will be uh, will be there soon, and um, so next question is uh, like recording where will the recordings be available? And this is then like something we have to uh, develop for um, integrations make with uh, recording platforms like Kaltura and Media Site and so on. Uh, where you can like transfer automatically server side recordings to uh, configured uh, media management system. Uh, so it's easy to provide just a download link, but uh, in general, usually you want uh, a deep integration with the recording system. So this will be the next step after making recording available. Um, so, but recording will be there quite soon. Um, then let me see. There's a GitHub repository for that, but what about full integration with EduMeet? I'm not sure if I, Christopher, if I understand it completely with this, um, there's a GitHub repository for that. Yes, there are two branches available. That's I'm, what I'm talking about. But uh, what about full integration with EduMeet? So this is like uh, full integration with EduMeet. You are, I think you are asking about um, integration to other systems <laughs> like... Um, yeah, so we'll see perhaps the other is coming or you can, Christopher, my question about recording was answered. It seems like it will be, yeah, okay. Um, then breakout rooms again, but I think uh, claiming room with federated login will work. Yeah, right now uh, there is no function like I want to claim the room and make it permanently my room. This is not there yet, but it is uh, available. You can configure EduMeet if you want that uh, only uh, authenticated users, authenticated by EduGain, for example, uh, are able to establish rooms in EduMeet. So you can close, close uh, look down your installation that it will be only a meeting platform for your authenticated users. They can invite others. Everybody can be in the meeting, but uh, like uh, you are the host in the meeting and this has to be uh, authenticated user. So this is already possible today and you can configure it on the on, on server side. So, but our demo instance right now with this let's meet for example is completely open but in general it's it's easily possible and uh, if uh, you want to you can also make your own customizations it's quite flexible from the config you can actually you can uh, make your own logic to how um, who is able to establish a room, who is, will be moderator in the room, and you can automate the whole process if you want. But then you have um, to make this, um, there's a, a deep integration there. And it's not like uh, you can do it from uh, a user interface. So it's in by config file, but it's uh, possible. Um, so this was this claiming rooms. What is the procedure to develop a local instance and how do we join it to the federation? Not sure if I understand it completely, but um, 
I think it's about how to develop. So it's an open source pro project and most of the community and uh, developing is happening on, on GitHub. And so everybody can join there and uh, can join the team or you can just fork out your own version and make customizations if you want. But uh, preferred is to work together with the community and we are all are working together on improvements or that uh, users make their um, um, bug reports or you get uh, a good um, community working together there. So there is GitHub, the uh, central point where you should start. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. There were a lot of questions about Blick blue, bu blue button. Um, in principle, um, we have um, the same integration, so there's no comparison table with features according to Blick, Big Blue Button. But in principle, at you meet, you can install it on from Moodle, for example, which is some kind of the most popular um, integration. And um, I'm not completely sure about recording a Blick Boo button. I only know that the functionality is available, and there were, uh, was a lot of. Um, issues with the recording according to privacy issues in big, big blue button and in principle we want to solve it from the beginning that uh, we get it right with user consent and uh, gdpr and privacy issues so that if someone starts a recording that uh, all users get a notification and can give their consent uh, or not so and if they are not giving their consent, they will be not able to participate with their media into the meeting, but they can still uh, get passive interaction. So no interaction, but uh, can be in the meeting and see and hear everything, but don't can, um, can't um, speak or send their video if they don't want to be recorded. So this is actually the, the last steps we are implementing right now. Um, is it possible to have the recorded video of the meeting at the end of the meeting? So yeah, this is depending on what kind of functionality or what kind of recording you are using. If you record locally, then it will be already there, so it's locally on your uh, on your PC. And if you use this uh, server side uh, recording, then uh, there will be uh, a download link in, in the end. And otherwise, uh, the server side recording, the, the main target there is to transfer the recording to a to a media platform so that there will be a kind of integration. But um, so first we want to have in place the recording and server side recording. And after that, we start to integrate it with the recording platforms that you can uh, have this automatic transfer to um, recording platforms like MediaSite or Kaitura. Uh, any idea about usage in low latency networks? Will it be possible experiment in musical production environment? Yeah, so we did uh, uh, invest resources to adjust this topic uh, that uh, you can interact uh, as musician in, in the meeting in EduMeet. Uh, and that's why we have these advanced uh, audio switches there that you can switch off all these uh, filters, which are uh, very important in meeting context. But if you want to uh, interact with each other uh, um, in 
uh, as a musician, so you want to hear everybody at the same time and like sing or play an instrument according to this. So all audio streams have to be active at the same time. So there should be no automatic um, about uh, who is the active speaker and only the active speaker is allowed to to play. So this is uh, very difficult in video uh, conferencing platforms. Uh, but we uh, try to address this by these functionalities. And we are working uh, together with um, some people there. They test it and we get more input, like make a default um, audio setting for musicians that they get by one button uh, uh, a default for making high quality audio interaction. And in general, EduMeet is uh, high quality audio by defini definition. We use uh, the uh, Opus audio codec, which is the best uh, audio codec available right now. And this for if you're talking about uh, compressed audio, so there's um, compression on, 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 on the audio and there's no uh, uncompressed audio option available right now. And uh, we discussed uh, a lot ab about this and perhaps it will be available, but not in the near future with um, raw audio. And this will be then very uh, special um, use of, of EduMeet. But it is a topic in, in the development. So we try to address this. And there are experiments. We had some uh, student products with testing uh, raw audio in, 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 in browser. And uh, it's difficult, uh, but possible. So in, in principle, it's, it's on, on the roadmap, but it's not uh, uh, in the near future. It will, will not be there in the next month or so. Um, yeah, then there are a lot of there were questions about scaling and limitations and clusters. So I can say in general a little bit about scaling the platform. So this is more technical then. Right now, it is possible to scale to a large size. So you can add uh, several server instances to one EduMeet instance. So you can just add uh, additional machines and they are serving on the same address. And uh, this is uh, right now solved by an HA proxy before it, and then it will load balance between all the instances. And there are some instances uh, using this, and it is tested right now in, in practice use with four or six servers at the same time on one instance, but in, in principle, we didn't experience somehow a limitation there, how many servers you can add. And uh, like a general rule, you can have on one uh, standard server, if you have hardware server and the server has like, for example, eight physical cores and a standard amount of memory and a good network bandwidth. And I'm talking about more than one gigabit bandwidth. So best with, if you have a server with 10 gigabit connection, then you can host uh, around um, uh, like 4,000 users on, on, one, on, on one such machine. And then you can like just add several servers and it will scale up. The only limitation there is right now, how many users you can have in one room at the same time. And this is um, a theoretical question right now, but uh, we can't scale uh, right now one room over several servers. So one room has to be um, hosted on one server only. And if the resources of this one server uh, 
uh, exhausted, then it's not possible to have more um, more participants in this one room. But in general, one instance of Edumit can scale over several users. So you can have like uh, 50 rooms with each room 1,000 users in, and this will scale, but not 50,000 users on one server. So this in general, but uh, the scaling functionality we are improving. So we will in the architecture will like make it media nodes, which are only uh, responsible for making uh, routing the media traffic and have some signaling logical nodes uh, managing everything. And then you can uh, just add several media nodes and there will come also the uh, scalability over several machines in physical. So then this limitation will not be there anymore. So this is uh, yeah general according to scaling. I hope this uh, addresses most of the questions according to scaling. If there are more specific technical questions, then there is a document on GitHub in the wiki section there. Um, describing a little bit according to uh, what you need, what kind of hardware you need, and how you can calculate um, the resources. Yeah, then there was one question about why we don't use Edumeet. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to answer the question. I could. Perhaps, uh, Bartek, you want to answer? No. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that that the only the only reason was just to, it's in it's it's typical usage of Zoom for uh, info sure. Uh, that's that's one reason, and then then the second one uh, the number of participants, right? Uh, that uh, we are not able to foresee. Uh, yeah, so next thing for sure on Adumit will be definitely on Adumit. Mm. Yeah, so in principle, Adumit is not really battle tested for big groups. And uh, the experience is not, uh, not yet completely there where Zoom is right now. So if you want, for example, like the gallery view where you see a lot of people at the same time. Uh, there, this is not yet completely the same experience in Edumeet. Right now, there is like you can see, you in, can increase the number up to ten. You can see at the same time in gallery view, and the next minor release will uh, lift this up to like it is in Zoom, and then will be this experience as well. And the other functionality which was meet, missing for actually this meeting, if you want to um, share a video with audio, then uh, it is not yet possible in Edumeet that you get the audio uh, hustle free uh, into the meeting. So you have to um, go to over some barriers there. And so it's not, uh, not uh, ready yet. But also, this will be resolved uh, in the next minor release. That you can, at least in the Chrome browser, if you use the Chrome browser, um, share your audio uh, call, uh, together with the desktop. Um, there were also some questions about Big Blue Button, right? The Big, the big Blue Button was. Uh... There was that the stage was very and the future was very uh, uncertain uh, when we started uh, work. So at that stage, Big Blue Button was using uh, Flash and uh, yeah. So that and actually, it's it's more webinar platform than video conferencing platform. So that's why we are not comparing directly to uh, directly to. Uh, Blue button and Jitsi was also mentioned. Uh, yeah, that was similar story with Jitsi during that time. And actually, now we are we are somehow 
supporting, for example, Renater, which is uh, French and uh, 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 I mean, Rendezvous, which is uh, Renater's uh, Jitsi implementation, and we are collaborating, for example, with uh, this standard technology uh, to support it. So yes, there are that there are some other possibilities uh, and some other uh, some other uh, some other uh, services uh, that we actually were also comparing to, but they, uh, that that wasn't possible to show it also on the presentation on, on on one slide. Uh, and so regarding these functional aspects that there were all many, many questions, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, yes, we are listening to, uh, to our society. So please share your ideas, your needs, and we will do our best to put, uh, uh, to put on our roadmap as soon as possible. Uh, so, um, I think that that most of uh, of these requests were already somewhere on the roadmap mentioned. But if you've got some some new uh, ideas like uh, private chatting, uh, please please share uh, with us. Uh, actually, about private chatting, we were discussing already before. Uh, also, so this general answers for general topics. Are there some more technical topics, Stefan, or it's already answered? There was one question also, according to Edugain or authentication, what is possible? And right now we mainly use it in edugain context. Um, so uh, the technology is op it uses uh, Open ID Connect uh, for authenticate users, and this is what we are using with edugain together. And um, but in principle, you can also configure it like the. Uh, the old uh, stuff with, um, with the thermal uh, authentication method there. And it's also possible to configure uh, a local uh, file so you can hack in your own users if you really want. But uh, the, the main target here is OpenID Connect as the uh, standard authentication method right now. But you can uh, combine it with uh, additional uh, infrastructure that it works also with, uh, with SAML uh, or uh, other authentication servers. And according to development, it's quite easy to add. If you are a developer to add your own authentication, uh, method. So we are using um, uh, Passport uh, there where you can like uh, integrate quite um, comfortably your own uh, methods there. But we in, in general focus on, on OpenID Connect here and use EduGain there. One question was about uh, zip gateway, and it's there in, on GitHub. Yeah, so we have one proof of concept that you can ring in with uh, conferencing equipment endpoints that speak zip. Yes, um, and I call it a proof of concept. It's um, working somehow, but it's not ready for production use. So don't um, think of it right now. Uh, and But we are also developing uh, on this right now. So we um, have uh, some persons looking into this to make this available, uh, available for uh, production use. And I don't have an estimate how, uh, when it will, will come production ready. OK, 
Okay. I don't know if there are what is the max bandwidth in Opus. Okay. Um, bandwidth in according to bits per second. Um, I think it's about 320 kilobits per second you can configure. I'm not completely sure about this, but it is um, limited to 48 uh, uh, kilohertz in sampling rate, and it will adapt uh, in, in network bandwidth. Um, a cause. And I really want to um, mark this that uh, in, in Opus you get uh, uh, best possible audio quality right now uh, possible if you're talking about compressed uh, audio in, in web conferencing and also according to latency in audio, which is very important, especially for musicians wanted to want to react to each other and latency is very important, then also the audio codec is uh, the best one to choose. You can configure your uh, latency down to 2.5 milliseconds that it will send audio uh, as soon as there is audio data available on from your microphone. It will send very little packets quite often to get the best uh, possible latency. And we want to make this also in in, uh, in the future available for the user in, in the user interface that you can configure this as a uh, musician if you really want it and you have good uh, network uh, connection and bandwidth that you can enable uh, very short latency audio and uh, can try it out to make it best possible um, experience. Yeah, there was also the question about the future of broadcasting and streaming. Yeah, this is something that 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 we are also uh, working on. This uh, this is uh, somehow related to uh, to recording as well, and the, the base is the same. Uh, however, we cannot uh, predict exact date now for that release. Uh, how large is Edumit uh, team currently? Uh, the team as a whole is, uh, I would have to count eight participants, right? But of course not, not all our developers. There are a lot of paperwork around. Uh, yeah, so as the summary, we are a small team and we really appreciate all the, uh, uh, all, all, all support. So please uh, be active if you can on GitHub, on mailing list. We will really appreciate that. Uh, what is more? Claiming rooms with federated logins, how it would uh, it would lo look like. Actually, uh, in PSNC, we, we, we are making just now a proof of concept uh, just to use the privileges from, uh, uh, from uh, logging engines. So I mean the uh, IDP. And that's that's the, the, the there is a possibility to to transfer some uh, information that would allow you to control more your room. So uh, if you are not in the room, the room is not available for anyone. However, this is a workaround, and the uh, dedicated version will be uh, will be inside uh, Edomit itself. Uh, experience feeling with WebRTC support on browsers other than, than Google Chrome. So Chrome, Chromium, uh, Edge, uh, Opera, these are all Chromium-based browsers. Uh, so then we've got Firefox, we've got some open issues, and as you can see on, 
uh, Bugzilla, uh, there is uh, a bug uh, from six years ago, uh, which forces actually to, to move all the traffic uh, via relays. And that's why uh, Firefox is slower. Uh, we tried to speed up the, the, that uh, fixing the bug at six years, but unfortunately no, no result yet. However, uh, there was another Firefox bug that, that was uh, reported by the team and, uh, and it was fixed in the next release of, uh, of Firefox that was uh, quite uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, we sometimes we are facing some problems with uh, different combinations uh, iOS plus Safari. It's uh, it's more related to that, to that mix than to Edumit, but in general Safari is uh, is uh, supporting for PC as well. So no Internet Explorer. It's actually the main answer. Don't use Internet Explorer, and then you can participate in a meeting. And but some functionalities are not available for all browsers. And according to this, um, there's quite often the a question about monitoring and statistics. We have uh, a Prometheus uh, module there, which is some kind uh, pre-configured you can use. Uh, but in general, there is some kind of generic module uh, which just puts out uh, JSON data. You can put into whatever uh, statistic platform you are using. So you can use Prometheus, but there is no limitation. So you can put it in Grafana or Humeo or whatever you are using, uh, whatever platform uh, gets um, uh, JSON data and usually uh, such monitoring platforms support JSON as a standard. So this is the first data format and it, um, it just has to be configured and then you have the data. And there you get uh, main statistics about um, live um, room uh, usage and how many participants at the same time are on your platform. And this goes up to uh, statistics about quality and um, network uh, conditions, connections from all participants. Uh, but then you have to uh, invest more of work on your monitoring platform that you um, can present this data that it is uh, um, has a good uh, presentation. So we only put out this data and you have to uh, configure your own monitoring uh, platform. So there is uh, right now this Prometheus module where you get a uh, basic start where you can uh, monitor the main um, statistics of the platform. And if you want more, then you have to uh, yeah, work on, on your monitoring uh, platform by yourself and uh, make these dashboards. So uh, I just want to say that very close to the three and a half, so we have to finish very soon. And uh, Stefan and Bartek, if you have uh, uh, some answers or some to comment, uh, please uh, try to be shorter because we have to finish very soon. This in the show. Okay, so I. I think that if there are some uh, some additional questions that were not answered, please contact us on support at and we'll do our best to clarify that or 
directly myself, as you can see on this slide. Uh, and uh, if, if, if there is something, some questions that were not, not answers. There were a lot of songs. Thank you very much for that involvement. Thank you very much for your interest. Uh, we really appreciate that. And as we mentioned before, uh, we are part of the society and we want to, and we will listen to your needs. So please don't hesitate to contact with us in case of uh, some scenarios, some functional needs, some uh, integrations idea. We are here to uh, to support you. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Bartek. And thank you, Stefan and Matze, for uh, your excellent presentation and for your effort. Is this info share? Uh, especially, Stefan, thank you for you answer all of these questions and. Thank you very much uh, to all for particip participating uh, in the InfoShare. Uh, as Bartek said, if you have any uh, additional questions or comments, you can contact them directly or on the mailing list. Actually, it was everything what we prepared for you today. I hope so that was informative for you and you learned something new. And uh, I wish you have a nice day and uh, goodbye. And see you in some other InfoShare. Thank you very much once again. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.